As you have seen with my most recent videos, I've been doing some John Kirstein compilations from seasons 1 through 3. I thought it'd be a good idea to do a character analysis on my favorite character on Attack on Titan, which is John. He goes through an extreme amount of character development in season 1, and he continues to grow throughout the episodes and seasons. He's one of the few characters with no sad background and grows up in an overall normal life with normal goals and was nothing more than a normal person that resonated with many other people. Marco is one who recognized that. Jean is also well known for apparently having a horse face and it even gets brought up in the anime a few times. And lastly, who can forget his obvious infatuation for Mikasa? So let's get started with the character analysis for Jean Kirstein. There was an OVA that showed a little more into Jean's backstory before enrolling to be a soldier. He grew up spoiled from his mom and the famous meme, Omelette, came from it. Even as he grew up, his mom still pampered him and he was close with her. What's crazy is that before meeting Mikasa, he drew a picture that resembled her. So once he finally met her, he was sold because she was actually what he pretty much dreamed and drew. Most characters we come to meet have sad backgrounds, such as Levi growing up in the underworld, Ervin's dad dying without him knowing the truth of the world, Aaron seeing his mom getting eaten by a titan, and so on and so on. When we get introduced to Jean, he's kinda... No, actually, he's just a dick. He's overconfident in his skills, and he'll do what he needs to do in order to live the life that he wants to pursue. He's like Hannes. He wants to become strong, just so he can relax and live the easy life. Jean then enrolls to become a soldier, because he's confident he has the skills to be a scout, but has no initiative for that. He grew up getting spoiled from his mother, and the lavish, lax life is something he wants to hold on to. Aaron seeks freedom, whereas Jean considers chilling in Walsina as freedom. Jean and Hannes are a lot alike, and Aaron discusses both of their views on the current situation of mankind. Jean and Aaron fight right from the start, and continue all the way until the end of Season 3. Once we get through the soldier training, they actually had to face Titans. A lot of them were confident killing just cut out Titans, but the real ones made all of them scared for their lives. Jean is so scared that he can't move. He sees his comrades die, and yet he can't seem to do a thing. But even as scared as he is, he finds the strength to move forward with the mission. Jean might have the most compassion in the show. He feels bad for every death, and unlike Aravind, he doesn't want to sacrifice a single person. And he isn't some bold person like Aaron, or some badass like Mikasa, or Levi. He is truly a regular, normal person. He might be a regular normal person, but he is very well rounded, being good in combat, leadership, and loyalty. The most developed he's gone through is once Marco dies. Jean feels what most would feel, which is a meaningless death and one where no one would even know what happened. He doesn't know how Marco went out, and no one up until this point didn't know either. When Jean decides to join on a regiment, he thinks back on what kind, wise words that Marco gave to him, which was, I don't think you're a good leader because you're strong. I think it's because you know what it's like to be weak. He also thinks back on what Aaron said to him and realizes with what little power he has, he wants to make a difference in this world and bring change to the Eldians. He brings up how he doesn't want to become a lump of bones no one can distinguish multiple times. He shows his fear and weaknesses plenty of times and shows how he can relate to everyone else. He's what political candidates try to be. Relatable. Jean becomes more confident going up against the Titans, but even as time goes on, he still cares for each person's well-being. In Season 2, he gets worried about the MPs when they drop like flies. But seeing how the MPs act and work, he's glad with the decision he made, even after all the shit he has seen. The compassion he has later becomes a weakness, because in the show, it ends up becoming humans versus humans in the walls. Jean always thought it was humans versus Titans, but some humans gave up against the Titans and want to fight for what's left inside the walls. Jean can't find the strength to kill a human, and because of his hesitation, he almost gets killed. He's lucky our men had the guts to pull the trigger for him. Jean and the whole character cast are constantly being introduced to new ideas, threats, and progression towards the goal of freedom. Jean keeps the idea of saving the people of Eldia while reducing the amount of people that have to die. He wants to preserve all of what's left in mankind. Season 1, he wanted to make a difference while making sure he doesn't die a meaningless, unknown death. In Season 4, he makes amends with whatever happens. He just wants to see true peace. Even after everything that happens, he wants all of the death and destruction to end. 
he's willing to join Marley. The people who put him through so much hell, and the people who are the reason that Marco died, as long as it means stopping the violence. Thanks for listening to my short 100 minute character analysis on Jean Kirstein. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more Attack on Titan, One Punch Man, and My Hero Academia content.